Hey guys, it's Randy with Lowbuck LS here again. Uh, just gonna shoot a quick video this episode to show you guys some of the troubleshooting I'm doing. Uh, troubleshooting that high fuel pressure issue I've been having ever since I put in that Walbro 525 Hellcat fuel pump in the tank. Uh, my fuel pressure at idle has been like 90 PSI. So I've got a couple theories that either the return line um, isn't big enough or my fuel pressure regulator isn't big enough. So um, what I'm actually gonna do, the first thing I'm gonna test is, here's the factory bucket. Um, my theory is that on the Chinese uh, Amazon hanger top hat for the fuel pump that I used that I've currently got in the tank, I think there's a restriction on the return line in that bucket. So uh, I'm just gonna show you guys what I'm gonna do to uh, troubleshoot that and see if my theory is correct. All right guys, so we're looking at the uh, top of the fuel pump hanger in my gas tank. Um, I've got the bed tilted up like I did in uh, the video a couple uh, weeks ago. Showed you guys the bed tilt method to access your fuel pump. So still got the bed tilted up. And like I said, my theory is that in this bucket, that return line right there, I think has a restriction on it. So what I'm gonna do is disconnect the return line right there. And then we'll go over to the table here and I'll show you how I'm gonna test this theory. So the way I'm gonna test this uh, theory that uh, there's a restriction in the return line in the uh, bucket I've got in the tank, I'm gonna cut this hose barb for the return line out of this old bucket and I'm going to use I've either got we'll see I've got these Dremel uh, easy lock plastic cutting wheels we'll see uh, if we can cut the plastic with that and worst case if that doesn't work I've got like this mini hacksaw thing here so uh, basically what I'm going to do just cut along here, cut this off so I've got this, I don't know, two inch sec section of uh, hose barb. And then I'm gonna put this clear hose on there and clip it into the return line. And then I'm gonna run the other end of this uh, clear hose, I'll cut a five foot section or however long I need and run it right into the filler nozzle of the tank. So. That way the return line will be uh, bypassing this the bucket that's in the truck and be going right into the, uh, the filler of the tank. So if I do that and my fuel pressure returns to normal, I know there's a restriction in the return line in that bucket. And then we can pull the bucket and see if we can port that out or what we can do. But that's the first thing we're gonna do is uh, cut this or attempt I haven't had very good luck with plastic lately, but we'll attempt to uh, cut this hose barb out of here and kind of make an adapter that we can connect this clear hose onto the return line. All right, guys, so I was successful in getting this plastic piece cut out of there. I did use that uh, Dremel plastic disc and it worked pretty good for, but one thing I noticed, if you look at the size of the hole, in this end of the hose barb, it's a reasonable size, but on this end, it's smaller. It's like an eighth of an inch. So um, if that other uh, bucket is the same way where the return line kind of tapers down, that could be what's causing my uh, high fuel pressure issue. So now I'm going to uh, stick this piece inside the hose and then uh, clip it into the uh, return line. So to enlarge that hole, I just took, I think it's an 11 64th drill bit, basically a drill bit that just fits inside the big end there and drilled it all the way through to uh, enlarge where it was restricted there. So now we'll uh, put it into that plastic tubing and hook it into our uh, return line. And that's what I was talking about. I just shoved that plastic hose barb about an inch into this plastic hose and then I'm gonna 
cut it long enough that the uh, other end of this hose can go right into the filler of the uh, fuel tank and that'll bypass the top hat or bucket assembly altogether and uh, tell me if there's a restriction in that return line. Okay, so we're back under the truck. You can see I've got my plastic uh, tubing there hooked into the return line coming from the fuel rail and it just goes up and into the filler neck and I've stuffed about two feet down in there so it shouldn't come out. So now I'm gonna open up the garage door and fire up the truck and see uh, how my fuel pressure is at idle. Okay, we're gonna fire this thing up and see what we got for fuel pressure. As you could see, uh, even with that uh, bucket bypassed, I still had like, I think it was like 78 or almost 80 pounds of uh, fuel pressure at idle. So thinking I'm going to have to uh, upgrade my fuel lines, um, at least the return line. I think the main line's probably okay because it's getting that 80 pounds to the fuel rail and to the regulator. So I think the main fuel line is okay, but I'm thinking, uh, I may need to go with the aftermarket fuel pressure regulator, like uh, Aeromotive or something like that. And I'm thinking I may need a bigger return line back to the tank. But while I've got the, the box tilted up, I think I'm going to uh, knock the ring off and pull the, the hanger and the bucket and uh, just inspect things and uh, make sure that uh, like you saw how that stock uh, bucket had that restriction going into it. I'm just going to stick a drill bit. Uh, I don't want to wreck it, so I'm not going to uh, have the bit in the drill, but I think I'm just going to stick a drill bit by hand and see uh, if I can feel any restriction in that return line inside that fitting where it goes into the bucket. So we'll hop back under the truck and do that now. All right, so like I said, I got that ring... Uh, too close up here but got that ring out of there got the top hat loose so I can access this uh, return line here and I'm actually gonna stick the not pointy end of a drill bit in and just see and there's no restriction I can push it all the way in and this hole is actually bigger than the factory one because this is the bit that I used to drill out the factory one and it's loose in this hole so no restriction in there so I'll put her back together and uh, drop the box down. Alright yeah so like I said I'm just gonna put the, the truck back together for now. I think I'm actually gonna try to drive it the way it is um, now that I've got that uh, fuel pressure sensor wired in I can log my fuel pressure in HP tuners so I'm going to see what happens to the fuel pressure once I start getting into boost and stuff like that, but I'm going to have to wait for a bit of snow to melt on the roads around here first. Um, it's a lot nicer week this week than it was last week. Last week it was minus 40 and this week it's above freezing, so with any luck, uh, if the roads get dry, we'll take this thing out for a drive. Um, and I think what I'd like to try next... Um, in the last video I put out, I talked about uh, the one thing I don't like about my turbo system, and that is how it doesn't have the narrow band O2 sensors anymore, so it can't run in closed loop. So, um, But somebody commented, uh, Michael was his first name, can't remember his last name, started with a C, um, but he commented and posted a procedure on Facebook, um, and I shared it in the Lobach LS Facebook group on how to uh, basically just use one of the factory narrowband O2 sensors and wire it to both inputs and then you gotta fool your injectors on both banks into uh, reading off that 102 sensor but that uh, would allow me to install a factory narrowband O2 sensor in the downpipe downstream of the turbo 
and if I can get it to work, that would give me back my uh, closed loop operation at uh, part throttle and cruise and stuff. So that's pretty intriguing to me. I'd sure like to uh, get my closed loop operation back. So I think that's what I'm going to try next. So that will, if I can get parts together, I'll be working on that this weekend and hopefully put that out as uh, our next Tuesday video. And this video um, that I shot right now wasn't very big or and wasn't that informative. It was just kind of to document me troubleshooting this high fuel pressure issue. So I'm, uh, I'll just put this out as kind of a bonus episode in the middle of the week, but uh, planning on messing with that single narrow band O2 sensor for closed loop operation in the downpipe downstream of the turbo if I can get my stuff together for the weekend. So thanks a lot for watching. Uh, follow us on Instagram, uh, LowBuckLS, uh, Facebook, LowBuckLS. Come join our group there. There's a bunch of guys sharing cool projects and cool information. So it's going to be all for this one. We'll talk to you on the next one. Bye for now.